Hello and welcome back to the Reapers and we are in our beloved A10 Charlie which I hardly ever fly but I'm going to fly it now. We're going to look at Takan and ILS. So Takan is a general navigation system that allows us to navigate to certain points to an airbase or to uh, an aircraft, an air-to-air -air refueler or something like that. And ILS is a system that allows us to land. It's a system that gets us onto the glide slope and keeps us on the glide slope of an airfield in bad conditions so what we've done is we've set the fog up so we shouldn't be able to see anything on the ground i know you can see that reflection there but i think that's just a bit buggy um and so we're going to be completely reliant on our instruments until about 100 feet uh when we see the runway if everything works out okay so we're putting takan and ILS in this one video we're going to use takan in this example to get within about 10 miles of the airbase and get us on the right vector and uh, effect effect effectively to get us on or near the glide slope then and within 10 miles we're going to turn on our ILS system and let it guide us uh, along the glide slope to the runway to a beautiful touchdown and we'll touch down in formation and perfect grim reapers nothing bad will happen uh, before we uh, punch the go button when it's going to get harder to do all this stuff I'm going to just show you around the cockpit we've got the UFC up here we're going to be using that we're going to be using the right MFD here we're going to be using the ADI artificial horizon here for the ILS we're going to be using the HSI horizontal situation indicator here for the TACAN buttons here to turn the TACAN and ILS on and off and we're going to be using this panel here which is the TACAN controller this panel here which is the ILS controller so let's go and get it set up so the first thing we want to do is set up our TACAN and ILS systems on our panels here okay uh, so we need some frequencies for, for the ILS we need a frequency and for the TACAN we need a code so there's two ways of doing that first of all I can press the beloved F10 key and you see we're out here somewhere out to the west of Batumi Batumi we're going to land at and so that's if we were to click on click on Batumi like that we get TACAN code there 16 x-ray or we get 80 uh, sorry uh, where is it gone ILS there for uh, frequency there for that runway 13 that's the runway landing this way here uh, we'd also like a, an exact vector of the runway because runway 13 is just a rough vector if you like and we can get an exact vector um, where is it I can't see it on there at the moment so what I'm going to do just to cheat and be quick is to draw a course line down the runway like that and I get 126 one two six as our course line. Okay, right. So that's uh, so we've memorised that information. One two six one one zero point three zero and sixteen X-ray. So I'm going to pause and we're going to plug that into our systems. Um, before we do that, actually, let me just show you the other way of getting that information. I'm going to unpause now. Let me just get myself stable. I'm going to click function here on the UFC function two, and I'm going to click click CDU on the right MFD here and divert and this gives us our series of divert bases the one that we're nearest to is Batumi going to click on Batumi and it's got the information again here plus some so it's got uh, runway 13 ILS 110.30 TACAN uh, channel 16 elevation and all cool some cool stuff there so I'm just going to level myself out just give me a second okay now we're going to type in that information uh, this can be a little bit fiddly especially if you've got a dodgy tracker art like me so first of all this stop here on our TACAN sets the uh, the tens of digits so we can scroll that around I'm using my mouse wheel I think you can use left and mouse button as well and then to the second knob that sets the single digits I'm using my mouse wheel to turn this left and right and I want to bring it up to six so we've got 16 uh, now if I would click on the outer ring around this knob here left and right click I can change between x-ray and uh, x-ray and Yankee uh, next I want and I'm gonna pause it here to Tebro I'm with Tebro today because why not uh, we've got the option switches here for the TACAN. We can turn it off, we can have it receive, we can have it transmit receive, we can have it air to air receive, or we can have it air to air transmit receive. Very briefly, off is off. Receive means that we can receive bearing information for the TACAN but not range. Track and receive means that we can uh, we, are, we are transmitting so that we can get bearing and range information. Uh, also allows us, um, if we're transmitting for another um, uh, plane to come and locate to us so we can transmit as a TACAN station but we're not going to do that today air to air receive means we can get the bearing to an airborne target like a tanker or a friend um, air to air transmit receive means that we can get the bearing and the range of an air vehicle like a tanker or a friend okay so we're going to go to transmit receive because we want ranging and bearing information 
for our ground target. So let's get that done. We transmit receive, and you can hear the Morse code coming in of, uh, well, it could be either the uh, ILS or the TACAM because I've got them both on at the moment. We've got a volume knob here to uh, increase and decrease the, 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 the beeping noise of the code, and we've got the same thing for the ILS. We've got um, a volume knob there. Okay, so that is that set up and ready to go. Oh, one thing I should say, there's a bit of a bug, uh, if you like me. So if you look at the ILS, currently it says power on. You can see that tick is power on, and that's power off. Well, mine's bugged. If anyone can tell me why, I'd love to know. I actually have to turn it off, like I'm about to do. Right mouse click. So I've turned it off now. That is actually on for me. If anyone knows why that is, I would love to know that, because that took me bloody ages to figure that out. Pausing it again. So uh, the next thing that we're going to do is use and explain our tack hand. So we're going to unpause. Sorry to keep unpausing Terbro, but uh, so behind the uh, stick here, we've got these functions here. So tack hand. We're currently on a steering point here, but we're going to go to tack hand. We we'll click tack hand, and it's picked up the information uh, from our tack hand um, system that we're receiving. So I'm going to pause it now. So we've got some needles um, to look at. Needle one is the one that we're interested in. Needle one gives us the heading from where we are now to um, our point of interest, which in this case is the uh, Batumi airbase. Um, we've also got a course line here. So that if we followed number one, basically needle one, that would take us directly to our airbase, which is great. But we need more than that. We need to get on the glide slope. So we need to, uh, if you like, simulate the glide slope and direction of the runway. And we're going to do that with the course line here. So I'm going to unpause and I'm going to set the course line to what we saw found earlier was an exact course of 126. But wait. We took that course, that 126, from the map here. So that is a true heading. Uh, and as Tebro explained earlier, this system here, the HSI, works with a magnetic heading, of which there is a six degree difference. Okay, so we're going to put not 126 in for the course, but 120. So stand by as I put 120. That will give us our magnetic course. And this course is essentially um, a simulating the runway course. Uh, whoops, one, two, zero, there. Okay, and let me just sort myself out again. Up. Um, so we've got some more icons here, so I'm going to just pause that. Now, we're very lucky at the moment that if I go to F10, um, we just happen to be in a point of space, because it's taken me this long to talk, where we are pretty close um, uh, to the correct course. You see, if I draw that line, we're very close to the correct course of the runway, even though we're facing a different direction. We're actually facing out here somewhere at the moment. Okay, uh, And that's shown here by this course line, which we've set here, is very close to our needle one, um, which is um, our Takan heading. Now, just to show, just to make it more obvious, what I'm going to do is actually fly badly on purpose. I'm going to fly past the course line of the runway, just to show you what happens. I'm going out slightly to the left, Tebro, just to show the course deviation. Hey, fair. I'm turning. I turned already on to course. Roger, sure, you can go and check it out. Now you can see what's starting to happen is this course line here is separating from this heading line here. The heading, remember, is the Takan taking us directly to uh, the runway, and this here is showing the course, actual course of the runway, how I want to align myself. And correspondingly, as I get further away from the course line, or the course line deviates from this heading line, this uh, deviation line has, is going here, or a trace line as I like to call it, to the right. It's saying that we're basically too far out to the left for the core, for these two to be aligned, and we do need them to be aligned. So I'm going to correct, I'm going to turn right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to chase, this is my aer aircraft indicator here, I'm going to chase this deviation line here. When the deviation line gets to the very center of the HSI, then it's good times. It means we've not only got the correct heading to the runway, but we're also on the correct course line or radial. So we're just going to turn right on purpose. Uh, this can be a little bit fiddly, especially as we've got no uh, visual um, idea of where the runway is. Now you can see our chase line is going to start coming in soon. Here it comes. You can see our chase line here is coming towards the center, me there, and I want to keep it there. Okay, and these two needles will get close to each other. That's what we want. There's also this little arrow here. You can see that means we're heading towards the ooh, towards the Takan station instead of away from it. So that's something that's pretty cool. Uh, oh, I forgot to say, because we're on transmit receive, we've also got the range here, 15 miles of closing. So we've got not much time left to um, get this get ourselves on course as well as on heading. You can see these, these lines are starting to match and the course deviation lines are getting towards the center. So I'm going to start rolling in. 
and as soon as I get back on heading I aim to have the course deviation line bang on the money. I'm 13 miles now, uh, when I get to 10 miles or so I'm going to switch over to ILS and we'll explain what ILS is then. Cap, you can already turn ILS on. You can have both tack and ILS at the same time and I actually got a contact from ILS at about 13 miles. Roger, I didn't realise that. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to keep up for the time being. Um, and you can see our course deviation line. I'm still chasing a tiny bit, but it's almost perfect. If I can get it a tiny bit more right, that means I will be on the correct course for the runway. I'm going to turn left a bit now. And pow. Now there's a little... Um, we've also got a waypoint. Uh, because we did it through... If you remember, we, we selected through the divert uh, menu on the CDU here to Batumi. We've also been given a waypoint, uh, which is that little red... Which is that little box there, which you can do. Or you can do it without the waypoint. That's up to you. It's a, just an extra little bonus because I can see where the center of that runway is. Okay, now if you look on the HSI, we're bang aligned. Deviation line is aligned. Course line is aligned. And heading line is aligned. And it, obviously you can see there... That is where the runway is, so you can see all the instruments are working. So now we're going to go to the ILS. We're within 10 miles, like Deborah says, you don't have to be within 10 miles, it's just something I like to do. ILS, and we've got some information. And pause. No, I've tried, tried to turn it off, i tried to turn it on. I haven't turned the frequency. Super cap, super thick. Can't believe I didn't do that. Right, um, and it's showing nothing because it's red, because cap's an idiot, and I've completely forgot to set my... Um, uh, ILS frequency, sorry about that, so I'm turning this knob with the mouse wheel to 110 and I'm turning this knob here to 30, I'm turning it off because of my funny bug right, it should work now and there we go, right, sorry Tebro, got to pause that is Tebro the dot, he's just slightly ahead of us so we've got, uh, looking at our ADI now, so we still need to keep this HSI correct but more importantly now, we're moving over to ILS, we've clicked ILS on and we're going to work with our um, ADI here, our artificial horizon we're going to have a vertical line here, that is basically, like, like I said before, another chase line a deviation line or a chase line, so it's, it's to the right of our true at the moment which is there and um, our, our current heading, so we need to basically move right to get on that line and that line will move to the center we want to keep that line at the center there's also a ver uh, sorry a horizontal line and that's exactly the same it's a chase line but it's for our elevation now it's it's not appeared at the moment um and i'm not sure if that's because of the range have you got your elevation line tebra hey firm do you have on the left an arrow either at the top yes. or the bottom yeah it's, a, it's yeah so it's, it's, it's up or down it's it's yeah, right at the top you need to go up Roger. So what Deborah is saying is we need to chase this this arrow here for the elevation uh, going up basically and that line that will appear. Once we've got those two lines, the um, the azimuth deviation line and the elevation deviation line, we want to try and keep them in the center as much as possible. And if we do that, it will take us down to the threshold of the runway. And as well, we want to keep this deviation, course deviation line in the center, but that's the more important is the ILS. Okay. Right, so I'm going to unpause there. Right, we've got to start thinking about a landing as well. So I'm six miles out, so just watch our airspeed. I think it's okay at the moment. So I'm heading up, and I'm trying to find our elevation deviation line. There it is. Hello, sir. Right, so it's down at the moment, which might, means I want to head down to chase it. And I'm going to head left a little bit. So I'm just flying. I'm not looking out the window anymore. I'm purely looking at the two yellow lines. And I want to get them right in the center there. Got it. Lovely. Air brake out. Sweet, it doesn't seem to be working. Never mind. It's just chasing that cross in. I'm going to go flaps down. Do you land with full flaps in this? You do, don't you, Tebro? Yeah. Yeah, full flaps, full air brakes. Roger. And gear. Yeah. Just chasing my line again. Alright, I'm going gear out. Just chasing that line. Are you down yet? Oh, but almost. Roger. Got that right on the centre now. Course line, deviation line on HSI is perfect. ILS is okay. A little bit jumpy. Speed 144 needs to come down just a touch. Chase that, chase that ADI um, yellow cross. He's off to the right now. Got to go right a little. Got to go up. Too low. Altitude, altitude. Speed up, power up. The bro is down. On the ground. 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 Now at some point we will see through the fog and see the runway. And there it is. The lights just came on. Thank you whoever did that. Um, so imagine if the fog was really thick and you didn't, you couldn't even see it from here. You'd still be completely reliant 
on the yellow cross. And you can see how accurate it is now. You can see it's going to take me right to the threshold. Or is it going to take me to the centre of the runway? Let's have a look. It looks like it's going to take me to the centre of the runway. So I'm going to deviate. No, it's taking me to the threshold. That's fine. So it kept coming in now. Still following the cross. I'm not looking out the windscreen at all. I'm still just following the cross. Chasing the cross up now. I've got angle of attack indicator on the here for landing. I want to keep that in the green. And I'm going to pull now. Power down now. Thump. And that was a pretty good landing. And you could do that. You could. Um, I don't know why the lights on the runway came on, but they did. And you could turn them off, make it really hard. You can make the fog thicker. And follow that uh, line on the ADI, the two lines, and it will take you right down the threshold every time. Um, so that's pretty cool. Right, that shows the workings of the ILS and the TACAN um, handshaking in combination. Anything you want to add to that, Tebro? Not at this time. Roger. Right, I hope that helped, and we'll see you later.